Tony Khan and AEW are airing the backstage footage of the CM Punk vs. Jungle Boy fight at All In this week on Dynamite. You know, like an idiot. CM Punk and Jungle Boy got into a fight back in August because real fights in the wrestling business with all those egos are inevitable. What shouldn't be inevitable is the promoter booking the whole territory around the fallout. Like how AEW responded to CM Punk's podcast appearance with that cringe Adam Copeland promo on their national TV show. If we learned anything from that promo, it's that nobody in that AEW audience knew what the hell Edge was talking about because they're not on the internet like that. But Tony is, and now he's doubling down by turning AEW into all elite backstage wrestling. Maybe he'll make a backstage championship belt now too. There's no winning for Tony Khan in this situation, by the way. Here are the only ways this situation can play out. Either this turns out to be cap and a bait and switch and Tony goes full carny losing even more trust with his audience or AEW airs a fight showing Khan fearing for his life on camera which will become the most memed clip among that internet audience he loves so much. Or the fight is shown on camera and it's not nearly as bad as people thought it was. So now fans think Tony Khan is an even bigger coward for fearing for his life. Also, are we sure that CM Punk and or WWE can't issue a cease and desist to stop AEW from airing that footage, thereby forcing AEW to cancel this segment? All because CM Punk and his triceps talk greasy about AEW to kick off WrestleMania week. 2024 has been defined by kicking AEW while it's down, and few people are more qualified to put the boots to AEW and pro wrestling's player coach Tony Khan than CM Punk. Punk's two-hour chat with Ariel Helwani ran the gamut of Punk's time in AEW, but most notably Punk's fight against Jack Perry during the brawl in one that ultimately claimed CM Punk's AEW career. Today, we're gonna talk about Punk's shoot interview on AEW, how he made Jungle Boy Jack Perry disappear, and how Phil Brooks continues to haunt AEW long after he's gone. You know what to do in Swahili. If anybody deserved an award or two for WWE's furious comeback in 2023, it was Jungle Boy Jack Perry. Man should've won best backstage fight in ways that benefit WWE, best hill to die on in ways that benefit WWE, and Everything you said is true, so thank you. While it's not fair to blame Jack Perry for CM Punk's AEW exit, it's unrealistic to not blame Jungle Boy. For all intents and purposes, CM Punk leaving AEW was the company's bash at the beach 2000 moment when its biggest star left once and for all, reducing AEW's once competitive pissing contest with WWE to a tuxedo cap fighting a dragon. AEW was in the midst of a record-breaking pay-per-view that they couldn't even enjoy. It was supposed to be its coming out party, but instead, AEW just came apart. Perry's falling out with CM Punk's silver-plated Phil Brooks to WWE. With the bloodline and Cody Rhodes already pouring it on, this led to a seismic shift in the national wrestling wars. It reminds me of the time the Lakers f***ed around and stole Pau Gasol from the Grizzlies for beads and trinkets, essentially. Or the time when the Spurs ended up with the lottery pick when they already had David Robinson and they turned that pick into Tim Duncan. Yeah, the NBA is rigged. You want to fight me over this or what? Surprisingly, CM Punk said he actually liked Jack Perry, but had to quote choke him a bit at AEW All In after Punk described Perry as a petulant young Hollywood blonde cursing out every producer who wouldn't let him use real glass. Prior to the brawl in, Jack Perry started with a promising career in AEW. Almost too promising. Through an MJF promo that served as a Tony Khan coronation by proxy, MJF named himself, Darby Allin, Sammy Guevara, and Jack Perry as the four pillars of AEW. This was gonna be the young foundation in the bedrock for AEW's dynasty as a competitor to WWE. By the way, there is nothing wrong with this idea at all. I was on board with AEW's choices, though would it have killed you to have a black pillar? And I like the fact that AEW was centering its product around four young homegrown talent. But with no leadership, each pillar became reckless. Darby Allen, on his way to make a dangerous trek of Mount Everest, legit broke his ankle before an already ill-advised trip. Tony Khan wasn't a good enough leader to put his foot down and tell one of his top stars not to climb Mount Everest. So in the absence of real leadership, Darby Allen had to legit break his ankle to protect him from himself. That's a real thing. Shortly before he broke his ankle, Darby Allen took an insane bump through real glass word to Jack Perry, who has the reverse Midas touch. 
MJF went from wrestling eight times a year and drawing money through his promos to wrestling the AEW style several times a month. This detracted from MJF's essential specialness in the marketplace, all while breaking his body down to the point that now he's hurt. Sammy Guevara was suspended yet again, apparently for injuring Jeff Hardy, but I don't all the way believe that that's the only reason he was suspended. Where there's smoke, there's fire, and we'll just leave it at that. Then there's Reckless Jack Perry, the real glass guy who ignored elder orders and used real glass. Forget the physical danger. The most dangerous part of Perry using real glass was the fact that it jeopardized CM Punk's future with AEW. After Perry used glass in a limousine spot against Hook, CM Punk got in one little fight and Tony got scurred and said, you're moving with Uncle Nick and Uncle Paul in Stamford. CM Punk was fired, or in his words, quit AEW after fighting Jack Perry. All's fair in love and war, so it wasn't too long before Punk was rewarded for his antagonistic relationship with AEW with a plum WrestleMania spot against Seth freaking Rollins. Punk's triceps injury prevented that from happening. Meanwhile, Jack Perry was punished as a homegrown talent who fought the ex-WWE guy. I tend to side with CM Punk in all this drama, but I'm also not part of the AEW locker room. In fact, I'm the furthest thing from it. So what kind of inferiority complex of a message is Tony Khan sending to his own locker room by keeping Jack Perry on ice due to a fight with a guy under WWE contract who's burying your company as we speak? With every day Jack Perry is gone from AEW TV, and every day Punk is given a public platform to speak his truth with Endeavor putting the battery in his back, Tony Khan looks like a sucker. Khan was reportedly furious with Jack Perry, who's been banished to New Japan Pro Wrestling. Perry didn't get any of the shine he could have gotten after being one of the most talked about wrestlers in the world for fighting CM Punk. You're in the wrestling business, Tony. You don't hide that. You embrace infamy. Ask Matt Hardy and Edge and Lita and CM Punk. Ask the final f***ing boss. CM Punk said this in so many words, but Tony Khan just ain't built for the wrestling business, bro. At least he isn't right now. In fact, this is where not being a good carny hurts Tony Khan. By not pushing Jack Perry as a lightning rod right after his fight with CM Punk, AEW lost out on all the buzz WWE benefited from by signing Phil Brooks. If the Brawl Inn was a Montreal screw job, Jack Perry is Bret Hart in WCW, a stick of dynamite, pun intended, that AEW decided to leave in the box. We'll be right back. If you're watching this, you're a wrestling fan. And my favorite type of wrestling fan, by the way, because you subscribe to this channel, thank you very much. Like me, you enjoy wrestling content, like documentaries and behind the scenes stories, like the Pipe Bomb Problem, RCM Punk documentary, which was named the greatest wrestling documentary of all time by Alfred Kanoa. And now you can get even more TV wrestling content with our affiliate, Friendly TV. Friendly TV is the most affordable streaming service in America, starting at only $6.99 per month, billed annually. And in addition to over 40 top-rated live TV networks, you can watch Dark Side of the Ring, which just premiered season five, Biography, WWE Legends, and WWE Rivals. I signed up for the seven day free trial of Friendly, and I'm keeping it because it has all my favorite wrestling content all in one place, all for the most affordable price in these United States. Right now, you can try Friendly for free by clicking the link in the description or scanning the QR code. If you're an avid wrestling fan who enjoys docu-series about this art, Friendly is your friend, and so am I. Depending on whom you believe, Jack Perry is currently in a fierce battle of penmanship with Tony Khan and AEW as he looks to either return to the company or be released from his contract entirely. By the way, AEW couldn't have picked a worse time to announce its releases, fresh off of CM Punk saying that they're not a real business. We all know how much real estate CM Punk has in Tony Khan's head, so it's fair to ask whether Khan announced his first wave of mass releases to prove that AEW can cut costs with the best of them. Jack Perry remains on the longest suspension ever. Draymond Green has had multiple suspensions in the time that Perry has had one. But to say Khan suspended Perry would imply Tony Khan had any authority over his talent. Khan is freezing up again for the same reasons he didn't want to talk to Punk throughout his last triceps injury. Khan is probably traumatized by the sight of Perry. Perry reminds Tony of everything he gave up trying to keep a top star that he eventually lost in CM Punk. Khan just can't come to grips with the brawl in, let alone the brawl out, enough to rehabilitate a pillar whose career may have been ruined by a combination of one poor choice and years of poor leadership. It's more likely than not that we look back at the four pillars, not as a jumping off point for AEW. 
not as a male for horsewomen, but as a curse. Whether it's MJF going to WWE, Darby Allin's body breaking down in a few years, Jack Perry's feud with CM Punk, or Sammy Guevara's suspensions, the pillars could just as easily be a cautionary tale as they could be an inspirational one. As of this writing, Jack Perry is the only current pillar who is actively wrestling. If WWE can forgive CM Punk for all he's done to them in the past, in addition to the red flags he brought from AEW, Tony Khan needs to stop holding Jungle Boy hostage and turn him loose as a heel in AEW. Check out this WrestleMania playlist and subscribe. When will Jack Perry return to AEW? Should AEW cloud chase and bring him back after the CM Punk interview? Tell me in the comments!